Good night, folks, and welcome to my combat channel. I'm Fabian Wiha, the king of Armbar. And, and I'm Heather Storm, filling in for Ron Yakman today. We got a lot to talk tonight. You guys know that tomorrow is uh, UFC 153 in Brazil. The weigh-in was today. We're going to go over a lot of topics. And uh, we got a lot of great stuff. We got the main card that we're going to talk about today and how Brazil is going to have their own stadium and bringing a lot more fights but to that country. But before we jump into that, we're going to find out or <laughs> what happened to Ron. So Ron Yakman was sent to Brazil to do the inside story in Brazil and he forgot that you need a visa. You need a visa when you go to Brazil. Hello. So I'm going to call my partner, Aoki David, they're trying is in Rio right now trying to release him out. Let's see if we can get a hold of him. Oh man. It's not looking good for Ron. Yeah, Ron, guys, if you go to Brazil, you need. <laughs> Hi, Aoki. Are you. Fabiano, hello. How, how's, how's everything there? How's, uh, how's Ron look like? Uh, I just uh, I, uh, we have a We have a serious problem, Fabiano. Uh, uh, I, I don't know how to say it to you. I visited him in the cell, and uh, he's not looking very well. He, uh, he was limping horribly. Uh, it looks like uh, some of the prisoners or some of the guys have had uh, their way with him, uh, and they're not going to be letting him go anytime soon. It's, it's very unfortunate. Uh, I am trying to see what I can do through the consulate, but uh, Fabiano, uh, I don't think you'll be returning to the show uh, uh, certainly uh, not this week, and uh, God willing, uh, sometime next year. <laughs> oh my God! Oh my so I, I hope he doesn't get married over there. Uh, I think that uh, he's been married a few times uh, in the oh last my. 24 hours. Oh my God! Okay, do do the best to try bring him back. Enjoy your time yeah, in Brazil. No, I, I'll do my best. Thank well, you, Fabiano. Thank you. Well, Wow, well, so, <laughs> Ron, it why you do like that? <laughs> Guys, you need to know that when you go to Brazil, you need to check first if you need a visa. And you do need a visa to go to Brazil if you are American. It sounds like Ron now has an episode for Locked Up Abroad. There we go. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to jump into UFC 153 and uh, take a look at the video of the waiting. It was pretty exciting this afternoon for us. That's right, there's a lot of great guys lined up to fight tonight. Rick Story. And Damian Maya. Damian Maya, there you go. Yeah. John Fitch, Eric Silva. That's going to be a great fight. I can't wait for that one. Yeah, and then we got... Uh, Fabio Mendonato. And Glover. And Glover Teixeira. There we go, everybody know. Minotauro, <laughs> Nogueira. And Dave Herman. There you go. And then, of course, the main card that everybody, the main event that everyone's waiting for. Stefan Bonner and Anderson uh, Silva. This is what everybody's waiting Look, for. Anderson is a little bit out of shape. You never see him a little bit extra. He keep, he doesn't need well, to cut Well, that's what he's doing weight. for this exactly. fight. That's yeah. what he's doing. He didn't have to cut the weight. He's going to move up in a and fight Bonner. Yeah, that's going to be a very excited uh, fight tomorrow, folks. If you can, if you can, you know, see this, this show is going to be great. Again, Anderson got a, a, like a last minute and decides to jump into the main event, and that's exactly what he did. And uh, who knows? Well, it doesn't very have no effect for him, though. Very hard situation because, you know, uh, Stefan can pull that out. A lot of people think they cannot. The odds today is 1,100 against uh against silva against uh no, no. against bona oh, okay. yeah, so you okay. need to put eleven hundred dollars to make a hundred back it's crazy so anyway uh and the other fight card is great and uh we got um dave um uh, no chris come on uh, come on chris camozzi chris camozzi yeah. we're gonna jump into that he's donating a portion of his purse uh, to the Institute Raquel, and basically that institute helps people. It teaches judo, it does English lessons, and it helps um, people who are underprivileged. And let me tell you, there's a lot of people, I'm sure you know mm -hmm. Fabiano, who are low income there and just don't have a lot of money. So he's donating a portion of his purse, and then the UFC, mm -hmm. they're going to come in and match that. that so is, that's really fantastic. That is very great because, again, guys, when you go to another country, 
it's two things that you you know you better learn how to do. Say a couple words <laughs> on their language so you can get some people into your side and do something good like he just did. You well, know? yeah. And do you think this will get him some fans from Brazil? He will. He will. Yeah. Again, he's fighting against a Brazilian guy that's not you know very good in Brazil, but. Uh, I hope uh, this, what he did, is great. I, he got some points on my side, yeah. and I am Brazilian. So. And then he's going to auction off some of his memorabilia as well from mm -hmm. additional funds. So. Yeah, that's going to be great because somebody will step up and buy his gear. Yeah. You know, like, he's a lot of rich guy in Brazil right now that is for a good, very good cause. They're going to jump in and make that fat check. Yeah. To the kids. And, and it again. also helps create a name Guys, for him. Guys, you know, this is where that. The, the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the gym is um, uh, at the favela, it's kind of like on the, uh, it's the, ghetto, basically. the ghetto, poor neighborhood. Yeah. And uh, called Ho 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 Rocinha, and it, they have 1,200 1200, uh, members. 1,200 members from ages 4 to 25, and they're helping all of those people, four locations. So they're doing a lot of great stuff. So if you're home, ask like, why Fabio Mondola, Mondonato he step in and fought Teixeira, simple. <laughs> he got nothing to lose. <laughs> well, I mean, for Teixeira, it's not necessarily the best thing. He was thinking that he was going to fight Rampage Jackson, yes. which didn't happen, so that would have been a great thing for him. But now it's just kind of like, it's not really going to do a lot for him, is it? Uh, in my opinion, they do want to bring Teixeira up. Teixeira being doing very great. He's uh, like his uh, last, uh, I believe, 14 or 15 fights on the road without losing. Uh, and. He lost a big opponent, that be uh, Rampage Jackson, and then they brought somebody in just so make sure that he's still fighting. Because in my opinion, they want to bring him to fight uh, John John. They want to make him look good. Like not <laughs> tomorrow, but it's stepping him up right. to be another champion. They want to make champion. him look good, and Maldonado is taking this opportunity and saying, "Hey, he's going down." Yeah, nothing <laughs> to lose. Nothing to lose. Anyway, guys, we gotta pay the bills. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Don't lose. Today he's got a better look than me. <laughs> so you can keep your eyes on. Welcome back, guys. So a lot of people have wanted to see Anderson Silva fight John Jones. But he says no way. Well, it's like some people thought about that because he's fighting tomorrow on the 205. They thought about maybe he, you know, step up on the way, on the way and right. he can fight the champion, that is John Jones. And he just said, there's no way, I just did that to help the promotion, help the UFC, but I'm not going to go into 205. Right. He also said that he's a lot of more people deserve the uh, uh, shot for the tire right. before him. Otherwise and he's, he's right jumping because, around. Yeah, this is not his <laughs> weight division. And uh, uh, I, I don't I, I, it's making make no sense at this point. And it's like, that's the shit right there. That's, that's the guy that they thinking about uh, possibly, you know, be coming up and fight John Jones. So Anderson been saying that okay, he maybe can go ahead and, and do a catch up with uh, George St. Pierre if George St. Pierre is still the champion on the, his next fight in uh, his next coming fight. Then you'd have the top two guys basically yeah, going it's head like, to head. Again, uh, you know, as a promoter view, I don't think that is a good, you know, good thing to do because you got two champions fighting against each other. Uh, of course, one's gonna lose, and so you kind of build up the champion, you build up the foundation, and then you're gonna drop one down. For, right. Well, doesn't, for doesn't doesn't seem to make a lot of yeah, sense. But but yet Dana White's kind of behind this Anderson Silva versus John Jones kind of thing. He's behind also <laughs> Anderson Silva against. Uh, uh, um, George St. Pierre. Right. You know, so I, I, I don't know, I kind of disagree. I, I don't think that's going to happen. If that happens, it's going to be definitely it's going to be an end of Anderson career. But would it would it really affect his title? I mean, he has 10 consecutive, he's defended his title 10 times. Mm -hmm. Would he, if he went against George St. Pierre, would that affect his title? No, or because no? they probably do a catchway. Okay. That means it's not going to be from the title. This is going to be a super fight and it's going to be a five rounds everything's going to be the same, but it's not going to be a tie. Okay. So it'd be safe. Just for part. show. Yeah, just for show. <laughs> just to prove who's the top. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so the uh, the whole uh, Olympic going to Brazil and the whole thing was going on right now at the MMA in Brazil, UFC got greedy. They think they can uh, fill it up uh, Maracanã. If you're right. a big soccer fan, 
you heard that name before. Well, that they 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 hold 96 thousand people in that stadium. I mean, that's a lot of people. I mean, right now the, the fight down in Brazil is sold out, the one mm. that's tomorrow. Yes. Um, but we're talking about a lot more people in this Macarana. Yes. I, I can't even say the name. Brazilian <laughs> it name. It is a Brazilian name <laughs> called Maracanã. Maracanã. It's like, you see how hard it is for me now? <laughs> ah, you, you take a little taste. I sympathize me. now. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so they plan and do uh, have a fight in 2013 that, and for something like that, they they definitely gonna need Anderson Silva against John Jones. Oh yeah, see, here it is, here so. it is. So they know what they're praying for. Well, right now Canada is the second um, revenue leader mm -hmm. under U.S. Mm -hmm. for UFC, but Brazil says that they can take that. That they're gonna, you know. Well, Brazil can take that as the same as Japan used to do. Pride in Japan used to be like uh, big numbers, big big numbers like uh, nine five thousand on the uh, baseball stadium yeah on the uh, Tokyo That's Dome huge. Tokyo Dome and uh, a couple other places so uh, and again the n same numbers of fans in Brazil and Japan is this similar and yeah. like kind of kind of kind of equal all over the world just they have the this big you know stadiums well it makes sense right I mean this is where mixed martial arts kind of came from I yeah, mean, why not <laughs> it makes sense yeah, exactly. that I would have that kind of fan base uh, there. the Maracana as we speak is being remodeling and getting ready for the World Cup Wow yeah that's gonna be great that's gonna be amazing so let's well I can say it's my favorite I don't know about you <laughs> okay. Ron used to agree with me okay but I think you will as well uh, the top 10 today is the heavyweight. All right. Erin Gales. Let's see what we got. And this is the top 10 for my combat channel. We voted. Hey everyone, this is Erin Gales, and this is your top 10 heavyweight division. At number 10, we have Travis Brown. At number 9, we have Antonio. Bigfoot Silva. At number eight, we have Josh Barnett. Number seven, Shane Carwin. At number six, we have Frank Muir. At number five, we have Daniel Cormier. And number four, Fabricio Verdum. Number three, Kane Velasquez. And at number two, Alistair Overeem. And at number one, the champion, Junior Dos Santos. Thank you so much for watching. I am Aaron Gales, and that was the top 10 heavyweight division. Let's take the female uh, moment right now and talk <laughs> about Heather. So you're at home, you don't know too much about her. She's here because poor Ron, what happened to him? <laughs> so Heather, so you are an MMA fan. How you got into this? Absolutely. Well, you know, I've been an MMA fan since my brother um, went to Thailand and started fighting Muay Thai. And I got to go there and go to the Limpini Stadium in Bangkok and see some fights. And I just got into it. I mean, this is where, you know, kickboxing started. I didn't even have a chance to go there, so you went there and it's, 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 so you know and if you don't know folks It's like the biggest stadium. The <laughs> crazy place for Muay Thai. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the place. Yeah. So it's pretty cool, you know, like good to know. And so we're gonna see more Heather. I saw you cover the K1 and Right. We need to go to a commercial. We need to pay our bills. That we'll, we'll be, be back. right back. <laughs> we are back. And you know, this happens a lot, you hear, in the UFC and a lot of sports. Yep. 
people get banned for substance abuse. Yep. So it's happened again this time to Jake Shields, and he's banned for six months. That's quite a long time, isn't it? Well, lucky him that he's young, still have time, but if he's on like an end of his career, that means see you later, yeah. holly yeah. yeah. Yeah, Jake is, uh, in my opinion, he's a very good fighter, very, very, very talented. He, he was to be one, uh, one of the best uh, ground work guys there. He's, he's uh, one of the most impressed victory of here was against Dan Henderson. And uh, unfortunately, he lost that battle. Well, and then this makes people question, you know, was he was he shooting up steroids and this is why he was winning and doing so well and is now he not going to be able to do so well or what, do you think it will affect his fight at all, you know, when he comes back? He's not, like, if he, if he, if he, if it is a steroid, it's something that is from his healthy. It's kind of like not like testosterone or something like that that make him stronger because he's, He's not. He's already built up himself, so he doesn't need that right. kind of stuff. So, so, I mean, what would you be using? Then? They didn't release exactly yeah. what he got caught into. Could so, have been smoking pot for all we know. <laughs> maybe, maybe, and that you know that well, happened. That's not gonna help a fight. That, that happened before. <laughs> that happened before. My when I fought Lavon Clark, he got caught and he uh, got caught smoking uh, pot. And the, f the good part about that is that I get a half of his purse. <laughs> because he got penalty, he got a half of his purse. Well, that's so. a benefit for you then. Absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely. That was good for me. Oh, and I lost my mic. Anyway, uh, we're going to talk about Dave Herman against Nogueira. That is not an easy fight. And in my opinion, one of these two fighters is going to go bye bye from UFC. Dave coming from two losses one against Roy and another one against Stefan. And uh, Nogueira, as you guys know, he just uh, he less fought, fought last year, and what happened to him? He got his arm broken by Frank Murr. I mean, he hasn't fought since he had his arm broken. I mean, that was yeah. 10 months ago. So, you know, I mean, this is, that's got to shake your confidence up a little bit, right? I mean, you have an injury, you kind of got to be nursing it in the back of your mind. Yeah, it's not only that, he's like, he also, uh, uh, it's the first time he got to meet. First time ever he got to submit in the ring. So Boltz is back. Of course, Nogueira in Brazil, it is, if you want to throw a fight in Brazil, you need to have Nogueira. <laughs> it's like, you know, half of that, like, you know, I have no idea how loud that place is going to be when he walk in. And I love him. He's a great guy. He's, he's just, he been fighting a way, like, before me. Well, he has 42 professional yeah. fights. I mean, that's a lot of fights. He's been fighting for 13 years professionally. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a guy, they asked him in the press conference if he was going to retire after this fight, you and better. he said, no way. <laughs> well, you better, but let's see. You know, let's see. Uh, and, uh, and the good part about Nogueira is that he does have a very strong team in Brazil. Right. You know, his team, the team Nogueira in Brazil, right now, as we speak, they have 74 members. So he's 74 Fighters, 74 bodies that you can go, you know, training. <laughs> one like one of these guys, every single one. You see right there. You see we have Anderson oh, yeah. Silva. You have uh, Junior dos Santos. You have his brother, and and uh, Pezão is right there. You see, it's too many good guys in one camp. That means. You, all, you only can get better, better, and better. Well, you know? he's like he said. He said his guys are always ready to go. Anyone's yeah. ready to take a fight at any point. That, that's what happened to Fabio uh, Mondonato. That's Fabio's right there. He's in his team, and so basically, like they, their mentality is to keep training as you fighting tomorrow. So right. they always kind of ready. That's to go. taxing on the body, though. I mean, if you're training as if you're fighting tomorrow. Well, they don't go like a hundred percent, you know, like, but they keep training. Like I, I take breaks. I used to take breaks. I used to go ahead for three months and fight and take like 15 or 20 days break and then go back and right. train again. Right. So they don't do that break. They just keep going. Keep going yeah, because on. the hard, the hard is training. Fight is easy. <laughs> you only fight one person. Remember? And it's a lot one quicker person. than your training, yes. right? <laughs> the, thank you. Yeah, and it's a lot more. So, uh, you know, they doing the good thing. You know, they have a very good, strong team. They have that. Uh, they train here at the Black, uh, Black House in LA, and they also have camp in Brazil. So they have two camps, one here over there. So it's now, if no, no, yeah, did retire. I mean, would he still have the team though? Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, okay. that's that. That's of 
idea of business yeah. wise, business side of the fighter. So he's always going to make money yeah. after producing these yes, great because, fighters in his team oh over yeah, and over and oh over yeah. again. He's in the game for good. <laughs> yeah, he goes. He goes, and he also train them. So he get posited, you know, to be a trainer. He also get posited to manage. He managed a couple of these guys. Right. And as you can tell, you know, top, like most of these top guys, they belong to their, t their, their team. Well, team right. Nobira. What's his nickname? Minotoro. Minotoro. That means yeah. the bull. The, a yes. big scary bull. If you ever seen a picture of that thing. Yes. <laughs> so his brother is the Minot Minotauro, and he is the Min no. His brother is Minotoro. He's the Minotauro. There you go. The, in you go, guys. Uh, thank you. Enjoy, enjoy the weekend. We life, as you guys know from Beverly Hills. Thank you so much. You're very well. You make me feel bad because I used to be the most look good looking guys and look at like what happened now. I'm not. Oh, anymore. you're still good looking. You're just a guy still. Ah, uh, yeah, the guy that the, the butterfly uh, on the side. And you know, if Ron's lucky, he'll be back. Yeah, hope. <laughs>